Okay, we're back. Good afternoon. It is Wow Wednesday day. Um, if you are hopping on again or later, let me know. Say hi in the comments. I am Alicia. I'm the founder of this group, the Healthy Moms of Faith. So say hi. Let me know who's here, who's watching. I was having some problems with my audio. So this is our second try today. I think I had the wrong mic on. So let me know if you can hear me now. If you can hear me loud and clear, I think I had the wrong mic setting on. So anyways, as people are coming in, say hi, let me know. Can you hear me better now? <laughs> um, I think I had the wrong uh, microphone on. So let me know in the comments, put hashtag live, hashtag replay. Let me know if you're watching later or now. Let me know if you can hear me. Thank you so much for the ladies that were on before and let me know that um, they cannot hear me. So. That can be a problem. Anyways, so um, today we're going to be talking about the number one mindset that could be missing in your health plan. And, um, oh, sweet. Okay, cool. Yay. Can you hear me? Great. Good. So, um, so I want to get into this idea of um, figuring out how to put a plan together for our health, right? I think that sometimes we... Um, start our health journey all willy-nilly and we just decide to do something and we go for it and we don't really think about this bigger picture um, or the vision that you should have for your health journey. And so today um, I want to get into the number one mindset that you need to be in in order to put a plan together for your health journey um, that will last um, I think that's really important. And so next week, I actually want to talk about some key factors that need to be in your health plan, but we really have to be in this mindset that I want to talk about today before we can really put those key factors into play. So I'm really excited to be here. Again, I'm Alicia. I'm the founder of this group. So excited to have you here. Um, I wanted to just say hi. We have a bunch of new people in the group. So if you're watching for the first time, let me know in the comments. Um, let me know where you're watching from. Um, I know we have people from all over literally the world. Um, so let me know where are you? Where are you watching from? So say hi. Let me know that you are um, excited to be here. So Okay, so I want to go ahead and get into the, into today's training. Um, you know, if you struggle to stick to any type of health plan, um, past or present, um, then this training is going to be for you because I really think, like I said, it boils down to the fact that um, you need to have a plan. We need to have a plan, and it needs to include some key factors. So when we start talking about this plan, there's a mindset that we need to be in. So I want to share that with you today. Um, and so if you feel like you struggle to stick to a health plan of any kind, um, then this will hopefully help you out. So <clears throat> again, welcome to you guys, um, you moms of faith. These weekly trainings are for you, uh, moms of faith or women of faith. And this group is designed to help us as we want to get healthier in spirit, soul, and body so that we can live a life we are designed to live a life that's thriving, not just surviving, right? We want to not just be surviving in life because that is not how God designed us to be. He designed us to thrive in life. So I really want to provide you ladies with some value here in this group so you can understand um, these things and understand how God designed you and desires for you to have more than what you have right now. And that includes your health journey. So I want you to understand these things so you can move forward in your health journey and maybe not be held back by things that have happened in the past. Um, so again, let me know if you're excited to be here. Let me know in the comments if you can hear me loud and clear. Um, if you are you know, just hopping on, of course, say hi. Um, or if you're watching later, put hashtag replay. Awesome. So I wanted to share um, some, some things with you today. Um, just about me and my story a little bit of you know where I've come from in my health journey you might have heard me share you know um, my complete story but I'm just going to share a little bit of what happened to me after my my children were born um, and I want you to kind of think about this in your own terms as well um, when it comes to your health journey because um, you know I've always not always. I started my health and fitness journey um, probably about, 
Well, technically, um, it was in high school. Um, I was homeschooled, and um, I had to take, like, a PE credit. And so I took, like, a local community um, center class. And so I did that. That was my first, like, real um, experience with exercise and really loved it. Um, it was a lot of fun. And so that's kind of where my journey began. That was about 20 years ago. Um, and so, you know, fast forward a little bit. I, um, I worked for a gym for a while. Um, I was a full-time hairstylist at that time, but I was a instructor, an, a group fitness instructor. And so I got into classes that I really liked. They motivated me. I saw results and that's really where the, um, the bulk of my health journey began. Um, didn't really know much about nutrition at that point. Um, I dabbled in it, but I didn't really know that much about it. And so, um, fast forward a little bit. I, um, I knew I always wanted to have kids. I wanted to be a stay at home mom. Um, and so that opportunity came. I finally got married. I was 28 when I got married or sorry, 26 when I got married, 28 when I had my first daughter or my first child, I have one daughter and one son. And so, <clears throat> um, after my daughter was born, and you know that whole mom experience of things changing in your life wow this is really um a big self-sacrifice um like i knew that but it's like everybody says you don't know what it's really like to be married until you're married and then it's you don't know what it's like to really be a mom until you're a mom um <clears throat> and you know so i i bring up this story because i remember being in the thick of my kids were little and just feeling worn out, um, not being able to really see much past diapers and breastfeeding and not sleeping very well. Um, my son was the worst of my two kids that didn't sleep very well. And I already had been diagnosed with a thyroid disease at that point. And so I was already tired, <laughs> I was already fatigued. And so I was working through these things in my health journey. And so, you know, I, I bring up that story because sometimes we get into whatever phase of life we are in, right? And we get stuck there. And it's really hard to get outside of the right now right? It's really hard for us to see the future. Does anybody else struggle with that? Because I really struggle with like looking outside the right now, like really right now consumes me. I'm getting better at it. My husband is way better at that. I think guys just generally have that sense of future thinking and he's the financial planner in our home. And like he has it all figured out, you know, 10 years down the road, 50 years down the road. Um, and so he's really helped me, f you know, c kind of come into this mindset of, you know, thinking, thinking bigger than what's going on right now. And again, not that it's not important to focus on the right now. Um, Katie says, definitely. Carrie says, daily, right? Um, you know, and I think it's because that's what we're good at as women. We are good at the details. We are good at that so-and-so needs this and so-and-so needs that. And you got to be there at this time. And like, that's just a gift I really think God has given us. And so we have this tendency, or I'll say I have this tendency to get stuck in looking at the right now and seeing outside and seeing the bigger picture, the bigger vision, if you will, of what's going on. You know, obviously we have babies to raise them to become children, to become hopefully good citizens and, you know, followers of Christ and all of these things. And sometimes we forget that when we're in the thick of diapers and breastfeeding and sleepless nights, that there is this bigger picture and there is something outside of where we're at right now, right? And so, you know, that can be the same way in our health journey. I think we get really focused on losing the weight, losing the inches, um, you know, feeling better in my clothing, that we kind of miss the idea that, okay, well, what happens after that? What happens after you lose the weight, after you lose the inches? You know, and that's why I really like to focus on non-scale victories. Um, you might hear me say that quite a bit because it's not just about the end result, right? When you get to the end result, 
there's another goal to meet. Like maybe you want to build muscle at that point, or maybe you're in the process of doing both where you're wanting to lose weight and build muscle at the same time. Like there's a lot that goes into thinking about your health journey and where you want to go. And so that's why I wanted to talk about this mindset because just because you hit a goal, just because you meet one phase, if you will, of a goal that you have doesn't mean that it stops. And also, if you think about it, you know, there is an after phase when you lose weight, it's the maintenance phase, right? How many of you have you've lost weight, but then keeping it off is the problem. And so I want you to start thinking more about the future and more about the non-skill victories. Um, you know, something that I um, watched, you know, so I had this vision of, you know, what I wanted my health to look like because I had watched my mom um, not do that for herself. I've always had this vision that I didn't want to be like my mom because she didn't take the time. She, she, she started out good, but there were six of us. So, you know, God bless her. Um, but she really didn't know how to prioritize her own health over taking care of her kids. And she homeschooled us all and she did all these things and she didn't sleep enough and, and all these things. And so now she, she suffered with weight loss and weight gain. And, and she has, um, actually right now she has third stage kidney failure and, um, you know, she's she's doing the best with what she's got now she struggles with migraines and all these things and so you know i've watched my mom go through this process and you know i've i've, I've been helping her too at this stage um and so she's still trying to figure it out now that she doesn't have kids around and she's trying to figure out you know what else does god want me to do and so you know i watched that and i was like I don't think that's really how God designed it to be, right? I don't want to be like that. So, you know, I really started to be proactive when I got into my health and fitness journey because I wanted to be be able to handle the pressures of life, be able to handle, handle all that life was going to throw at me as a mom, as a wife, and all these things. And, you know, if you if you think about that, that's the bigger picture, right? That's a long-term plan, right? So sometimes we get stuck in these short-term goals, short-term plans, and we forget about the future. We forget about the long-term plan. And so if that's ever been you, or if you're stuck in the short-term right now, put long-term in the comments and let me know, you know, do you need to start thinking about this? You need to have this plan that includes a long-term vision plan. And, you know, if this is a mindset that you struggle with, um, you're not alone, right? We all get caught up in the, you know, minute things of life, the minute, the minute, um, things that we want to see in our in our body, right? And so I want to give you some motivation. Um, I want to give you um, this idea that this mindset is that you need to have a long-term plan. If you're taking notes, write that down. You need to have a long-term plan. In this mindset of being in a long-term plan, um, for your bigger vision, your bigger future, um, it includes, if you, as believers, that includes what God wants, right? It involves his plan. And sometimes that can be hard, right? We have a, a hard time putting ourselves into his plan or releasing our plans. But that's the, that's the first part of this mindset, if you will, is that it needs to be a long-term plan your your mindset needs to be thinking about the bigger picture so um so yeah i want to share with you a reason or motivation to start thinking this way and this is where i think it really you know the rubber meets the road because again like i was saying god has this plan for us um he has great things planned for us so wouldn't we want to start seeing what that is, right? And so I want to read a few verses to you. <clears throat> I'm going to grab a drink real quick. Um, 
a few verses um, to you because, um, and these are verses that I share with my clients as well, because they're so important in getting us to think about this long-term vision, this long-term plan, um, that it's not just about the short-term goals. And the non-scale victories, the short-term pieces, they're important. They're very important because they get you to move towards this bigger vision, this bigger health plan um, that God has for you. And, and here's the other piece or the other part to that. It, it, it's that, again, it, it's not that it stops once you hit a goal, once you lose the weight, then it becomes the maintenance phase. Then it becomes something else. So our health journey is really never over, if you think about it. I mean, there's always going to be some sort of maintenance that we need to do. Now, it gets easier as we figure these things out, as you put a plan together that works for you. And that's, again, what we're going to talk about next week. Um, the factors that need to be in play to help you figure out how this long-term plan is going to happen and it's going to continue to happen and it's going to stay, right? Not that life doesn't happen. I say that a lot too. So anyways, I want to share these verses with you and write them down and, and I really want you to meditate on these verses as you start to think about your long-term health vision, your long-term health plan. And so the first one is Ephesians 2.10, <clears throat> probably a familiar verse. Um, I'm going to start in verse 8. I know I share these verses probably quite a bit, but that's the whole reason why I'm doing what I'm doing and why I have this group here. And so I really want to reiterate that these are really important verses um, to meditate on. So Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. That's verse 10. I like the NLT version, so that's this version. I know some versions say uh, workmanship. Um, that's also another word that's used. Um, but I love that vision. I love that idea that, you know, God has designed us to be this masterpiece. That's really awesome. So, and then probably a familiar verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, and I like to give some background with this too, because this was a time in um, the Bible when the Israelites were enslaved. They were enslaved in Babylon. And so God gave them this promise while they were enslaved. And so, you know, sometimes we can take this verse out of context and think, well, you know, God has great plans for me, um, but he said this while they were in tribulation, while they were being persecuted and, you know, they were slaves. And so this is a promise, but that doesn't mean that the promises, um, it means that the promises will come true, but that doesn't mean your life is going to be lined up the way that you want it to. It's going to be lined up with the way God wants it to. And the Israelites were reaping the consequences of not following the Lord. And even in that, he still told them this promise. And so Ephesians 29, I'm going to start in verse 10, says, this is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. And then verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, this is verse 12, in those days when you pray, I will listen. Verse 13 says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Verse 14 says, I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and I will bring you home again to your own land. <clears throat> and so, you know, I think that's really important. He was talking to the Israelites again. This was the promise that even though they were enslaved, that he had a good plan, and, and it was a plan for them to prosper. And that's the same. His word is true today as it was yesterday. And so, you know, I think that's important to remember that his plans are always better they're always better. It's hard sometimes to, to give that up, but his plans are always better, right? 
And then lastly, Ephesians 3, 14 through 20. <clears throat> I apologize ahead of time. Every time I read this verse, I cry. <laughs> so I will try not to cry. <clears throat> I know you guys can relate, but this verse means a lot to me. Um, specifically because um, this is a verse or a passage of verses that, you know, I see Paul praying over future generations. And, you know, we fall into that future generation of believers. And so this is a prayer that I pray over my clients. I pray over my business. Um, I pray over you ladies in this group. So I just want you to understand how important it is um, to understand that you are a masterpiece, that God has great plans for you and that he loves you and that he has a purpose for you that only you can do. He needs you to be doing this purpose in life. <clears throat> <coughs> So, Paul's praying this, this passage in Ephesians for the believers. And so I want you to know that I'm praying this over you as well as you are trying to figure out what your health journey looks like because it includes God's plan. It includes mindsets of you have a bigger purpose than just whatever situation you're in right now. Where you're at right now is important and it's very important that you do it well because he's, he wants to move you into the next phase of whatever he has for you. And so we have to be diligent with what he's given us right now, right? We have to be diligent with the diapers and the sleepless nights and, <laughs> and the breastfeeding and, and or whatever phase you're in, if you're raising teens, um, doing the best with what we know, doing it the best that we can and encouraging the people around us. And, though, and so it's really important to understand that this is, this is part of God's plan for you, okay? So, <clears throat> Ephesians three fourteen says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ that is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And verse 20 says, Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. And again, that was a prayer that Paul was praying over the Ephesians. And that's my prayer for you too, to understand that this vision, your health vision, should have God's plan in it. And so that's the second part of this mindset is that it should be long term and it should involve God's plan because God's plan is always best, right? And a lot of the time, God's plan, you know, it, it gives us this motivation that is different. As believers, it's different. Right? It's not focusing on the physical so much. Not that that's not important. It is because this is the tool that we have to use. This is the tool that we get to use for his kingdom purpose here on earth. Right? We have work to do. And so that's the second piece of this mindset. And that's the motivation of this mindset that it needs to be a long term plan. You need to be thinking about what's next. You need to be thinking about what happens after I lose the weight. What about maintenance? How's that going to fit into my life? And it also needs to include God's plan. And so again, if this is kind of new to you or you want to have this in your health plan and your health vision, put God's plan in the comments and let me know um, that that's what you need and that's what you want to start working on. 
And so that's pretty much all I have for today. Thank you, ladies, for the, the ladies who are watching. Um, Carrie says, um, I feel the same. My mom is trying to overcome diabetes because of her weight gain. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, I really believe that the enemy, um, he's fighting hard for our health um, at this point in the world, in our lives. And mentally, we have to be stronger and you know i've talked in the past about having that fight mentality that's something that we need to work on because the days are not going to get easier <laughs> we know this and so we've got to be prepared and we've got to have our physical health because our physical health affects every area of our life and you know we got to start with the right mindsets when we start to plan this out and when we start to um, work on this but we also have to remember that it's not really ever over. It's, you know, like I said, it can get easier. Um, you maneuver through obstacles, right? We talk about obstacles a lot. So anyways, <clears throat> I wanted to do that today to gear us up for next week where we're going to talk about the key factors. I think there's three main uh, factors, key factors that need to be in your health plan. And so I'm excited to share those with you next week. So make sure you're here. Um, and again, if you need some help figuring this out, how do you put together a health plan or this health vision for your life that includes a long-term plan and includes God's plan, um, put either one of those in the comments or you can put number one um, in the comments too. Um, let me know that you are searching and wanting to do that and I will reach out to you. And as always, feel free to post your comments and questions um, in the group as you are working through your health journey because I love seeing that. I love seeing you guys' um, camaraderie in the group and um, seeing, you know, sharing your 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 wins, your struggles. Um, that's why we're here in this group. So anyways, you guys have a great Wednesday. I will see you all next week.